Good morning, everybody. I'm John Newquist, and we're going to do uh, some exam prep for a certification for the ASP CSP in the area of geometry. Originally, I was just going to do all the math, but then I realized physics is a uh, quite a lot of questions, and if you had radiation and noise and rigging, those are separate areas. So I hope to do physics in the uh, summer, maybe radiation in the fall, but I'll add the other topics as we go through. But let's get started. I'll record it. It'll be on the YouTube channel for my name so you put in John Newquist and BCSP ASP CSP you'll be able to find this video uh, at the end you'll hopefully explain the blueprint of concepts related to geometry at the exams so for a lot of people uh, you know for the ASP you might get anywhere from none to three four geometry questions CSP zero to two questions uh, some of the questions they ask are, are what I call a uh, lot of stuff with geometry that we may not have used in years. So one of the things we have to talk about is what they call the perimeter. The perimeter is the area or the length around a square or a rectangle. This is a And for a lot of people, that's something you would have to calculate in a lot of construction sites, uh, figure out how much wood you need to go around or how much forms you would need. Uh, the perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width, or add up all four sides. So the perimeter of this lot that's 100 foot long by 60 feet is how many feet? 100, 160, 320, or 6,000. They will give you an online calculator, and we'll show it what, at the end what it'll look like, but you have to be able to use this calculator. Some people, you know, you will not get to bring your own calculator in. So the perimeter is 360 feet. If it's 100 feet and 60, the length of the two sides are 100 plus 100 is 200 feet. The other sides, 60 by 60, 120 feet. Add those together, you get 320 feet. The next one is uh, the area. The area is multiplying in a square or rectangle the one side times the other side, length times the width. Uh, that's important because if you have to figure out, you know, what you're going to do for, uh, you know, putting out how, so many square foot of a roof or so many square foot of sod, then that's what you would have to figure out. You have to know the area. So the rectangle is one side at 40 feet, the other side at 400 feet. What is the area? And the answers would be in square feet. And if you're following on YouTube, you could just pause the video here while you're doing the math. And the answer is 4,000 square feet. That means you're just taking the length of one side, 40 times 100 is 4,000 square feet. The area of the circle is a little bit tougher. First, we have to talk about two terms in a circle that you might run into. <clears throat> One of them may give you the diameter. That's the complete length across the longest section. And the radius is half the diameter. It's going from the center point of the circle to the edge. That's measured out. So you have to understand, when they give you a question, you have to figure out if you have a diameter on the question or a radius on the question. The area of the circle is pi. Pi is a mathematical constant equal to 3.14. You're going to multiply times the radius times the radius, or radius squared. I usually use the, uh, the star symbol as a multiplication symbol. So in order to calculate, we're going to square the radius, or radius times radius times multiply by pi. So calculate the area of a circle. The radius is 5 feet. What is the area? Now you're expected to know what pi is. It'll be also on the calculator. And the answer would be, again, anything with area is always in square feet. And the answer is 78.5 square feet. So the area is equal to our pi times our radius times our radius, or radius squared. And that's going to be pi times 25 and it's 3.14. You don't have to put all the other ones. I just use 3.14. The calculations will only go to one decibel. 
they're not going to go out five decibels. So 3.14 times 2.5 is about 78.54, and the answer you're looking for. Remember, they may not have exactly. You may see 78.4, 78.5. Don't worry about it. You're looking for what is the answer closest to the one they put on there. Circumference, just like we had perimeter, is the length around the circle. So we're going to go out and we're going to multiply 2 times pi times r. Again, a pi is our mathematical concepts. Remember, radius is from the center point to the end of the circle. So if we got a radius of 5 feet, this is always our center point of the circle, we have to figure out what the radius is. Now, I mean not the radius, but the circumference of the circle. So what circumference is, what is the length around this area? So let you have time to calculate it. The answer is 34.1 square, uh, 31.1 feet. So circumference is 2 times pi times 5, that's our radius. Circumference is 10 times pi, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times pi is equal to 31.4. Again, we usually only going to get one decimal point. They're not going to give you this long answer. Volume is your next set of questions. You'll see volume in different forms, in forms of a tank, uh, a warehouse, uh, sprinkler pipe, a lot of issues related to volume. So we're going to take what we call a prism, which is a rectangular square um, object. You know That means both sides on all three lengths, all three dimensions are parallel to each other. So all we're going to do is just multiply the volume is the length times the width times the height. And they expect you to know this. They don't, they're not going to give you that formula. They expect you to know how to calculate a volume question. So what's the volume of this prism? 276, 384, 512, or 720. And volume would be always in cubic something, cubic centimeters in this case. It's going to be 384. So we're going to multiply the length times the width times the height. Length is 12 times the height width of 4 times the height of 8 is 384. Calculating volume of cylinders much harder. But remember, we already know how to calculate the area of the circle. Now we're going to multiply it times the height. So the volume is the height times the area of the circle, which is pi times r times r, or r squared. Again, pi is 3.14. And the volume of a chemical tank, that's 16 feet high, 5 foot radius, you have to calculate. Is it 400, 1,056, 1,600, 2,000? going to be 1256.6 cubic feet. So our height is 16 feet, our pi is 3.14, our radius is 5 times 5. So we're going to have 16 times pi times 5 times 5. This is a reminder. So that number equals 400 times pi. 400 times 3.14 is 1256.6. Not so bad. This takes practice, and don't be surprised if you can't get it right off the bat. The big thing is it's got to be in all the same units. In the older days, they used to put um, the radius in inches and the height in feet, and you got to make them one unit. So you have to look at what the answer is. If the answer was in square feet, then you convert the inches to feet. If it was the answer was in square 
uh, volume uh, cubic inches then you'd have to convert the feet to inches you should not have that anymore you should be always the same units but if you do see something like that let me know and we can cover that again the weight of the water in the cylinder now this is a you know a tougher calculation you know as we're, we're kind of working through geometry and now calculating you know things that you're going to have to know because if you put a, a tank in a building you know you're going to have to think about how much that floor can handle and what the floor loading is so again we're going to calculate the volume which we already know how to do and then we have to know what the density of the water is so water they'll give you the densities they don't expect you to remember densities you know 62 pounds per cubic foot so if I have a 12 inch by 12 inch 12 inch box of water it's going to weigh 62 pounds that's hard for a lot of people to believe you know because they think well it'd, it'd weigh a lot less but it, it isn't you know when you buy a gallon there's not a complete cube in that gallon it's there's a lot of air in it so we're going to go out and calculate the weight of this water cylinder it's 100 feet high 0.5 in radius this could be like a sprinkler riser that's a, a typical case where they might want to say calculate the volume of the water in there sometimes they'll ask you you know how to calculate the pressure in it okay we're just going to go calculate the weight of the volume in this small cylinder, tall, thin cylinder. They'll give you usually a formula like this. V equals pi r squared, which is n times h. They usually will give you that. They don't expect you to know that necessarily. Um, and the weight, volume times density of water. So we're going to go through this a little slower. You have 1498. Density of water is 62.4 again. The volume of this first we have to calculate. Remember our height is 100 feet times pi times 0 0.05 times 0 0.05 is 78.5 cubic feet. The weight of the cylinder or the sprinkler pipe would be the volume times the density. 78.5 cubic feet times 62.5 cubic feet pounds per cubic feet equals 498 pounds 4898 pounds so a little bit tougher calculation to do and um, you know this is tough because most of the people have never done this in years if they even did it at all I was talking to a friend and and you know she said I have never done this math in my life so you're gonna you can always look up examples of how to calculate weights in cylinder weights in cubes and, and practice that because it, it's you know if you just do it once you may not have an easy time remembering how to do it again dike containment this is a common question you're going to get on the ASP or CSP possibly more common on the ASP is what I see uh, they want to know what is the volume of the dike or the volume of the tank and the the idea of a dike is if it leaks or ruptures for the tank that's in the in the dike itself the dike is a square area if this ruptures the dike has to hold the contents of it so we're just going to do a simple one where it just pours into the dike or goes into a dike and we you know a lot of times they use a, a safety factor of 1.1 they in the questions they may ask you for none they're just going to fill it up exactly high some people at 10 percent um, but the main thing we have to look at is how to figure out the, the volume of it is just like a cube length times width times height and then we have to convert cubic feet to gallons that's a tough conversion so you know 0.1337 cube uh, gallons or cubic feet equal a gallon and then we see if it calculates and holds it so square dikes contain a spill of oil. The dike has a base square with sides of 20 meters and 3 meters. Remember, they'll give you feet and meters in these, these questions, and they won't mix and match them, thankfully. So we have to figure out what can the volume of the tank even contain. Well, that's a simple one. Now we're just doing this as a volume of the tank. I'm going to give you a choice of 300, 400, 1,200, 1,600. So this one's pretty simple. This one we're going to figure out, it's 20 feet by 20 feet times 3. The 1,200 cubic meters is the volume of the tank. So if the tank pours into the 
dike that's what it can handle and that's it so you'd have to figure out what is the size of the tank now cylindrical tank 10,000 gallons of oil springs a leak the dike, the dike uh, was conducted to contain the spill how much cubic feet so we're going to go back to this case Again, one gallon is equal to 0 0.00 cubic feet so all we're trying to do is figure out what we have in in the cubic feet for the size of the dike so we know volume of the tank is 10,000 gallons we convert this to cubic feet 10,000 times 0 0.1336 the volume of tank is point or excuse me 1336.8 that's the volume of the dike needed this throws a lot of people off because they don't think it's that easy you have to remember all we're doing is putting this gallons into cubic feet and that's how big the dike has if I go back our case in this one 1300 cubic feet our dike here has to be able to hold that 1300 cubic feet we know a cubic meter is 39 inches by 39 inches so you know if I had a 1200 meter um, cubic meter tank or dike the contents of that tank would easily be contained in that dike that's all you're looking for so let's go over the uh, TI-30 a little bit this is the calculator there's different versions on there um, you have to be able to use the on-screen version of this. What I find is difficult. Uh, you can get a trial version, then you can't get back to it unless you pay hundreds of dollars, which I find is nonsense. But you know, you're going to have to be able to do, you know, statistics, standard deviation, and these. I tell people a lot of times, go buy this TI-30X for thirty dollars, and play with it on the math stuff. Get used to it, so that you know what these keys do, so you can add a simple equation. Because otherwise, if you can't even figure out, okay, 5 plus 6, and you're looking for the equal sign, you're not, it, 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 these are a little bit different type of calculators to use for some people. It's a much different than your phone calculator. Here we got pi. We don't even have to remember what 3.14 is. And then you're going to have to learn how to use the second shift, which means it'll calculate angles. It'll also square numbers, sine and cosine, and then inverse cosine and tangent. So I always recommend, you know, buy one of these. When you do the math, try to sit there and use that calculator. And so when you get the on-screen version, you can pretty well get through it. And thank you very much. If you have questions, I'm on LinkedIn and as well as the BCSP study group.